Good morning. Welcome in to Wake Up America. The Chinese spy balloon was shot down on Saturday off the coast of South Carolina by an F-22 fighter jet with a A-9 Sidewinder missile taking just one shot. But that balloon seemingly transmitting data back to Beijing for days before the Biden administration finally took action. Navy divers are right now trying to recover that balloon, which is sitting at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean about 50 feet down. We'll keep an eye on that process. Joining us now for more Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs. Congressman, good morning. Good to see you. You. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, great to have you back. So you're the chairman of the subcommittee on crime and federal government surveillance. So you know a thing or two about what the CCP might have been doing here. You tweeted this out over the weekend. Uh, America first, not China first. Donald Trump, by the way, with a slam dunk there. Uh, here's what former Defense Secretary Mark Esper had to say right here on Newsmax about the possibility of this happening when Donald Trump was in the Oval Office. Prior administration, did, did this, I don't know if it did, but were there ever spy balloons over the United States when you were working at the Pentagon or in any capacity that you know about? I've had no recollection of this. I said it earlier today on, an, on another network. And since then, I've checked with some of my former colleagues. None of them have any recollection of this. I, I think Secretary Pompeo said on TV today, uh, he has no, he, he never saw anything like this. So I, I don't, I, I, I don't Good. recall ever seeing this happen. Yeah, and I will add that this thing was visible to the naked eye, but your reaction to that and sort of this narrative by the Democrats over the weekend that, hey, nothing to see here, this little spy balloon was just like a satellite. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is they really misplayed this. It was, it was horribly handled. This, their, their excuse now is twofold. They've got two narratives going. Number one, they couldn't knock it down when it was over uh, land uh, the U.S. land mass for fear that it might cause damage. And the second is that this is no big deal because it happened previous, under the previous administration. Well, you have everybody from John, uh, John Bolton to DNI uh, Radcliffe saying it just, that's not true. It didn't happen. So that, that takes care of the first narrative. But the second thing is you have Bering Strait, the Aleutians, Alaska, and Montana, where even Governor John Forte and Senator Dane said they should have shot it down over, over Montana. In the meantime, uh, we don't know what data they were collecting, uh, but we know that they were over Montana, where we have uh, almost, uh, you know, almost 150 nuclear uh, uh, missiles sitting there, and they, they just float around over that. So we don't know what they got, uh, which is extremely troubling, and we don't know why this administration uh, chose a, such a feckless response. And by the way, no consequences for President Xi as this balloon drifted over a total of five military installments. Really unbelievable stuff, stuff we haven't seen since the Second World War. According to the Associated Press Congressman, quote, China responded that it reserved the right to take further action and criticize the U.S. for an obvious overreaction and a serious violation of international practice. What do you make of that take further action. Do you expect China to somehow respond to us taking out this balloon? They may, they may try to do something. I, I would imagine there'd be some response. But, but the reality is we're, we're not going to see anything that, uh, that they're necessarily going to do. It won't be overt, in my opinion. It'll be, be lesser. But I will tell you this. The reason that this happened, and China says that we violated international practice, when they're when they're the one in, in, uh, basically enters into our air, airspace uh, in violation of international practice, is because Joe Biden has allowed this to happen. Um, this this is everything that you see going on where North Korea is emboldened and bellicose. You got uh, Iran is not only emboldened but we've returned uh, uh, tons of money, hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars back to Iran. Um, you, you've seen. Uh, uh, Russia go into Ukraine, which never would have happened under right. Donald Trump, in fact, when they threatened. And then you move to this. And this is just one more example of, of China pushing and probing to determine how weak our administration really will be. And uh, it turns out it's really, really weak. Congressman, one thing that China and Russia share in common is they both have state-run media. Uh, tomorrow night at midnight will mark two weeks since DirecTV uh, dropped Newsmax from their, their channel lineup. Uh, this is the second more conservative-leaning network to be dropped from DirecTV in the last 12 months. You've been really vocal about this. Uh, it, it's unbelievable because just by their actions, judging based on their actions, it seems like DirecTV wants to follow the model that we've seen championed in China and Russia, state-run media. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and that's, you're, you're right. And the way to think about it is uh, you had two Democrats write to, to uh, AT&T and others saying, remove Fox, remove OAN, and remove Newsmax. And what happens? Uh, you've got two of those three that have been removed now. And, and the reality is when you marry big tech censorship, big tech in and of itself with big government and big business, you get the makings of kind of an authoritarian fascist style government. And when you start controlling the media like that, you, you control the people because you can uh, uh, impact how they think, how they make decisions. And, and that's what we've seen going on here. And that, that's very real. It's a threat to the United States and, and our way of life. And, and uh, AT&T should be, you know, people should be switching. Yeah, Congressman, we appreciate you saying that. Appreciate your leadership. I know we've got a lot of great Newsmax viewers from the state of Arizona. Uh, thank you for being with us, Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs.